Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Now, this is a very interesting trigonometric equation because we have sine of cosine x equals cosine of sine x. And we're going to be solving for real x values. Before we start solving this equation, I would like to talk about something that we will use uh, in our solution. So, let's go ahead and take a look at sine x plus cosine x. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why this is going to come up. You'll see in a little bit. So I want to find the maximum and minimum values for this sum. Now, there's a couple different ways to go about it. Obviously, you can use differentiation. You can use, um, you know, different uh, formulas, so on and so forth. The approach that I'm going to use involves the following. So my goal is to find the max and the min value for this expression or function. Now, I'm going to multiply this by something and then divide by the same thing. So let's go ahead and multiply this expression by root 2 over 2, which should be familiar to you if you are doing trigonometry. And I want to divide by the same quantity so that it's balanced. Now, I want to distribute the square root of 2 over 2. And uh, from there, I'm going to get something nice. So let's go ahead and write it as follows. Sine x multiplied by root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 times cosine x. There's a reason why I write it that way. You'll see in a little bit. And then the whole thing is divided by root 2 over 2. Now, obviously, at this point, uh, this is 1 over root 2. So you can go ahead and flip that and write it as root 2 times this quantity. So let's go ahead and bring this root 2 over here. Since this is equal to 1 over root 2, I can do that. And now replace the root 2 over 2 with something trigonometric. How about... How about replacing the first one with cosine of pi over 4 and the second one with sine of pi over 4? Since those are equal, it doesn't matter which one is which. Okay, great. So this is our expression that we are trying to maximize and minimize. But notice that the expression inside the parentheses is a well-known, um, what should I say, a formula or some type of structure. It is basically equal to sine of x plus pi over 4. Awesome. This is really neat, right? So we have square root of 2 times sine of something. And remember, sine of something, doesn't matter what, is always between negative 1 and 1, inclusive, because those are the minimum and maximum values for sine, if x is real, of course. So when you multiply by square root of 2, you're going to get the values, our range for this function, which is going to be from negative root 2 over negative root 2 to positive root 2. So this is going to be the minimum value for this function, and this is going to be the maximum value for this function. And remember, this is the same thing as sine x plus cosine x. Great. So once we establish that, we can kind of talk about the solution method here. Let me rewrite the equation. Sine of cosine x equals cosine of sine x. To be able to solve this equation, I'm going to use a well-known fact in trigonometry. If two angles are complementary, such as alpha and beta, so if alpha plus beta is pi over 2, then you can basically say that sine of alpha is the same as cosine of beta, or vice versa, right? So this is a really nice, neat identity. So if you subtract an angle from pi over 2, uh, the sine turns into cosine and cosine turns into sine. So this allows us to convert one to another easily. And uh, for this problem, I would like to go with um, converting sine to cosine. Why? Because solving cosine equations, in my opinion, is a little easier than the sine because for sine, you have to write one of the solutions and then the other solution you have to subtract from pi, which is subtraction. But with the cosine, we can just talk about two angles who co whose cosines are equal, and those angles are basically opposites, right? So if you have alpha and negative alpha, their cosines are always going to be the same, and you can verify that on the unit circle, which is super duper important, by the way, if you are doing trigonometry. Awesome. Let's go ahead and proceed with the solution to, uh, to this problem by using this fact. Okay. Obviously, I can also write this as, uh, you know, kind of like in a different format, uh, such as I can basically replace the uh, alpha here with 
pi over 2 minus beta since alpha and beta are uh, complementary and it kind of uh, look like it looks like this okay I should replace the sine with cosine therefore we have this okay both sides so that's what I wanted to get so I wanted to get cosine on both sides let's go ahead and do the same thing here so I'm going to replace uh, cosine x with pi over 2 minus cosine x which is uh, the angle uh, which is the complementary of this angle there you go so it's going to look like this cosine of pi over 2 minus cosine x Okay, so this is the complement of cosine x, therefore its cosine is equal to the sine of cosine x. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And of course, on the right-hand side, we have our cosine. We're not going to change that. Now, I have cosines on uh, both sides, which is good. So I can co kind of proceed with the cosine way of solving things. Let's go ahead and do that, right? So I'm going to branch it off into two branches. So the first branch, let's call that A. Uh, I can safely say that from here, since these two are equal, pi over 2 minus cosine x equals sine x. Uh, and, well, I probably want to write it this way. Let me, allow me to write it this way because it kind of looks better. I'm going to start off with this and write it as sine x equals pi over 2 minus cosine x, which means if they're equal, their cosines are equal. But I want to add 2 and pi also to this to find general solutions and I want to put the sine and cosine on the same side so let's go ahead and add cosine to both sides and write it this way and now notice that I have the sine plus cosine and that's why we wanted to talk about that first is equal to pi over 2 remember what we found uh, the maximum value for sine plus cosine is root 2 and notice that pi over 2 is definitely greater than root 2 because root 2 is about 1.4 and pi over 2 is about 1.5-ish. Therefore, uh, this is impossible. You can't exceed root 2 for sine plus cosine. Therefore, we get no solutions from this branch, right? Okay, great, awesome. No solution is also considered a solution, right? Let's go ahead and look at the, the B branch. The B branch is basically involves the following. Uh, I'm going to just uh, keep the right-hand side, sine x, and the uh, left hand side this argument here I'm going to, going to negate it right so I'm going to write it as cosine x minus pi over 2 and then let's just add 2 k pi so what I did was basically if you have cosine alpha plus cosine beta this gives you two solutions either alpha equals beta plus 2 n pi or alpha is equal to negative beta plus 2 k pi of course n and k can be different values so if you proceed with this one like before uh, subtract cosine x from both sides you're going to get sine x minus cosine x equals negative pi over 2 plus 2k pi now we didn't do it but it's very similar uh, to find the minimum and maximum value for sine x minus cosine x uh, you're going to get um, the same thing pretty much so the minimum value for this is going to be negative root 2 but negative pi over 2 is definitely less than that because um, pi over 2 is greater than root 2 Therefore, this branch is also impossible. Therefore, there are no solutions to this equation. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this before we finish the video and see what that looks like graphically. And here I graphed both of these functions on the same coordinate plane. And you notice that they do not intersect. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.